Hey, I'm John Tabler. Welcome back. You know, this channel is about fermentation, sourdough health, clean eating, and you know, there are many fermented products that are awesome for your health. There's cheese, uh, milk. I do uh, some of that there with uh, curds and whey. And uh, there is uh, sauerkraut and so many things, but there's also wine. And we're going to start touching uh, the subject of wine and getting into uh, understanding how to make it and why it's extremely good for you if made properly, which basically none of the wine nowadays is made properly. Uh, not as it was in old times. Uh, you might find an Italian grandfather that knows how to make wine properly, that's probiotic, health-giving, and you know won't make you have any sort of a hangover or anything like that. Um, for the most part, because it's a probiotic, just like sauerkraut. You know, sauerkraut is cabbage that's fermented. Wine is grapes that are fermented. Uh, fermented cabbage doesn't give you a hangover or make you feel bad. It's extremely good for you because it's probiotic. Same thing with wine done properly today. I'm actually going to take some apple wine that's been in this, what's called a carboy. It's been in there for... Oh boy, that's been in there for going on two over two years. And I'm gonna open it and I'm gonna put it in this bottle. Now I'm gonna get in uh, into future videos showing you how to make wine. We're gonna go on a journey and actually go to a, a farm from the very beginning. You're gonna see how to do it uh, the right way, uh, the good way. This is a five gallon, what's called carboy, Italian made glass and the juice uh, goes in there. I ferment in glass because when fermentation is done properly, it's like a scrubbing cleanser and I don't want it to leach any metals off of any metallic thing or plastics for that matter. That's why I ferment in glass. Uh, it, it makes it pure and good for you. So this wine is actually apple wine and I put it in a melt carton jug. I used to just lift it up, but you know, I've become wiser as the years have gone along. You don't want any one of these to have a little imperfection. Crack, fall out, cut you. Uh, there's always a possibility of that. Don't even want to risk that. So I lift it up when it has liquid in it because that liquid's another 40 pounds in addition to the 12 or so that the, the carboy already is. So uh, once it's in there, you're over 50 pounds and lifting that up if there was an imperfection or something, there's always that possibility. It's a slight possibility, but uh, you don't want to find out the hard way on that. So I, I put a milk jug around it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this off to the side. And I'm going to open this for the first time. Now on the top, there's a tower that has water about that much. And it allows air to go out, but not in. Very simply. And that uh, is what uh, allows the fermentation to take place and the bubbles to happen and come out, but nothing in, and so it's preserved. And that was that juice was made. Uh, it was made by nature, but it was put in there right at an orchard where they juiced it fresh, so it cannot be pasteurized or anything like that. It can't have any chemicals on it. Uh, I suppose there could be trace amount of chemicals or something that had gotten on it. Ultra, ultra small. As long as it ferments, it will wipe anything like that out. But as long as it ferments, you know that it's fine. But you don't want to get any impurities or anything uh, in there like chlorine water or anything like that. Just pure 100% juice right from the apple. That's what this is. And so now what we're going to do is siphon it out, basically. This is kind of a complicated, well, it's not that complicated. It, it's, uh, the, the easiest way would be to stick a hose down in there. You don't want to get close to the bottom where there's going to be um, any sediment uh, to be sucked up into the hose. But then you just siphon it. It's just that this, you don't have to suck on the end or do anything like that. And it also keeps anything from the bottom getting in. It's called a racking cane. Racking is when you take the sediment off of the bottom or actually you take the juice off of the sediment and put it into another container. Essentially, that's usually done earlier in uh, while it's still fermenting. But now we're going to do bottling and then we're going to taste it. 
And so this is the first time I've taken this lid off in a good long time, <laughs> over two, two years. So I'm going to open this. If it will come out, it's kind of changed shape. It's been in there so long. You see it's a little bit bigger right there. But there it is. And now I'm going to put this down in. And it has a clip on the edge that keeps it from going down too far and getting uh, right to the sediment. So we'll start right there. It's about that far off the bottom. But these bottles have been cleaned. And so now that hose is in the bottom and now we're going to pump a couple times and over the edge it goes. Now there's a clip that goes on these hoses and I, I misplaced it somewhere so it's not on there right now but it won't matter much. I'll just pinch it, pinch it shut. But you can see that that juice is ultra clear. It's never been filtered. It was filled up a dark uh, from the apples. It was much darker than that and the solid settled out and this is what was left. And right to the top it goes. Pinch that one off. Right into the next bottle. And just let them fill up. And this is sealed in a wonderful 100% apple wine. Now wine is called wine because the word was vine and vine was from a grape. We're going to do grapes, muscadines, and other things. But first was apple. And I know we're not getting into exactly how this was made. But I was getting ready to open this up, and we're going to get into that coming up very shortly in the upcoming videos. So I just wanted to have a little bit of primer to that and show you what is involved at the end of making this in filling up these bottles with wonderful wine. Now you can do things like this. What happens is as longer this is ferments, the sugar, the sweetness of the juice is completely gone, which is what is called dry. I have, you know, strange terms for things. Why is it that dry means there's no sweetness left? Well, <laughs> it's wet for sure, but that's what dry means. It's not sweet. So then you can sweeten it after the fact with honey. It's called back sweetening. But you got to remember, 99.999% of all wine that's made is actually made adding yeast, okay? And this is adding nothing whatsoever. Uh, many people, most people, in fact, that make wine will call that natural yeast, using natural yeast. Well, in fact, it's not yeast at all. Uh, it's actually the opposite of yeast. It's lactic acid bacteria. And there would probably be many that want to debate that, but the main thing about it is yeast and yeast comes from the mold and fungus family that breaks things down in nature. And this actually preserves rather than breaks down. And so this juice is preserved, which is awesome. Now, what I'm going to do is put that up higher. And I hope it doesn't fall off. No one, <laughs> I, don't need, I don't need wine all over the floor. But now it's up higher. It's, well, it almost did fall off. Uh, as long as it stays up higher, we'll be fine. And so I'm going to grab a glass. Give this a try. One second. So now here I have a glass. And I'm going to put the lid on one of these another of these and now I'm going to pour this this was cameo apples 
Cameo Apple Wine. And I know we're not getting into, into it right now, and we will definitely coming up, but again, nature, God put into substances like this the ability of it to preserve itself with just only the juice. And you put the juice in, seal it from oxygen, uh, uh, let a, a valve, let the air out, not in, and it just starts bubbling on its own. And like magic. Reminds me of one of those jumping beans. When you're a little kid, you see a Mexican jumping bean and it's just start bouncing like magic. Well, it's the same thing with this juice. It just starts bubbling like magic. And as it does that, it gradually wipes out the sugar in it. And that part turns is what makes the alcohol. So I'm going to give this a try now. It's excellent. The longer it sits, the drier it gets. And so it isn't like what you would expect maybe apple juice to taste like because it's not sweet. And most people have only ever had grape wine and apples taste different. There's a more tartness to this, but it's ultra clean. I tried some, maybe four other uh, apple, so-called apple wines, which are actually called cider. Apple cider is the correct term for it. I like apple wine better than name, but I know it doesn't come from a vine. It comes from a tree, so they call it cider, hard cider, and is really what apple wine is. But when you buy it at the store, it's almost like it's a beer mixed with some kind of an apple uh, juice concoction. It, it, the ones I bought, I spit out and poured them out. This, though, on the other hand, is ultra clean and just extremely good and probiotic, meaning promoting life rather than antibiotic, which is against that. Now, what you can do with a dry one like that is after the fact, take a little raw honey and Put in the uh, glass. Now, I've done this many times. It takes about eh, 30 seconds, 15, 20 seconds to really mix that up in there. But boy, the difference. It's just amazing when you sweeten that. It's like, I'll tell you what it happens. It's a very tart, uh, non-sweet taste prior, which almost resembles lemonade before you add the sugar and then after you put the honey in i mean it's tangy it's sweet it's like a lemonade but i haven't checked this one yet but it's about that's going to be about 11 12 percent alcohol and let me tell you something, you've never had anything like this, you have to try it. It's incredible. We're going to go on a journey of probiotic wines, probiotic fruit wines, and muscadine is going to be coming up. We're going to do apple again, and it's going to be incredible, an incredible journey. I just wanted to give you a little look, a little sneak peek into what was going to happen uh, coming up. But these probiotics are incredible, just like all the others are. They're meant for your health. They're meant for uh, wellness and for taste and goodness. I know you're going to love this journey. Hit like and subscribe down below. And I'll see you in the next video.